I was just telling Brian, I got some shit in the comments for uh, uh, alluding to Tennessee's orange as the faded orange in this matchup. Excuse me. I don't mean to orange shame anybody here. Tonight, the better orange was the home orange, which was the Tennessee orange. 92-84, to the win over Auburn, who wore orange. Uh, Look, we expected this to be a really entertaining game. We got our fulfillment there i mean this was a very very fun game to watch just from a viewer perspective it looked like tennessee was gonna win this game maybe not comfortably but they it felt like they were in control for much of the first half auburn would make a little mini run but tennessee would always keep it at an arm's length then in the second half to start auburn just goes lights out a huge run some turnovers some live ball scores uh it looked like they had kind of stolen the game away and then dalton connect just ripped it back. I mean, this kid is so, so, so good offensively. 39 points, 12 for 21 from the field. They brought him in to be a volume scorer. Rick Barnes brought him in to be this team's entire offense and uh, against the top five team in the country on Ken Palm. That's what Dalton Connect was in this game. How impressed are you by what you saw from Connect in Tennessee last night? I'm incredibly impressed with what I saw from Connect. We'll get into Tennessee in a little bit. Um, but we, we've said that he's the difference maker for this team. He is that offensive piece that past teams have not had. This past Tennessee teams, I don't think, would have won this game. It's easy to say when you connect shooting 21 shots and, and taking over completely down the stretch. But he was unstoppable. And we've seen this a number of times this season with him where Tennessee turns to him and is like, all right, we need you to kind of carry us. And he comes through every single time. I don't know how many consecutive points he had. During a one track in the second half where in Tennessee took the lead again and took it for good. But it felt like every time down the court, he was scoring. He was making contested shots over bigs, over smalls, getting guys isolated on the perimeter, driving to the basket. He was able to get to his spots, able to get clean releases, and every single thing went in. At least that's, at least that's what it felt like. Uh, it, it was just another performance. I think, and I, I've said this, he is the non-Zach Eady National Player of the Year, I think pretty convincingly. At this point, you have to have a separate category because Zach Eady is going to get it and should. But of everybody else, Dalton Connect has, has had the best season, and last night's game was the biggest reason why, or another reminder of why. Yeah, he. Uh, it, it's it's crazy because Connect is like singular in his path to how he got here. I mean, I it, it, look, he was a a renowned transfer target that a lot of different programs were after. I don't think in anyone's wildest dreams, they expected Dalton connect to be like a guy who gets 35 plus in multiple games against legitimate great opponents this year. I mean, we just, I can count on my fingers how many guys in college basketball have even done that since I've been alive. And uh, I I don't care what you say about his time before he got to Tennessee. Um, If you tell me that you saw this coming at this level after what he did last season, I would call you a liar. I I don't think this is the player he was at Northern Colorado. He might've done very similar things, but I mean, man, he, he wasn't doing this at that level, the way he's done it at this level against Auburn and against sec opponents and North Carolina, when he had 37 in the non-con, it's crazy. You have to tip your cap to Dalton himself for what he's done and the strides he's taken. You also have to give your, the credit to Tennessee staff to Rick Barnes. Um, but it's just it, – it reminds me – the only thing I can even compare it to as a fan was like I watched Duncan Robinson come through the ranks. And, it, I mean, he was a, a Division three kid who all of a sudden finds himself on a Michigan roster and was a role player. And then all of a sudden he's in the NBA playing great. And I'm like, that the guy I see in a Miami Heat uniform isn't even the guy I saw at Michigan. And I thought they did a great developmental job at Michigan. It's right. like connect, there, there knows there is no limit to connects development at this point. That would surprise me. Like, I don't know where he's going to get taken in the NBA draft. It's obviously a down year for the draft, but like, it wouldn't surprise me at all. If connect has this crazy run in the NCAA tournament scores, like 35 a game, maybe Tennessee cuts down the nets. And then all of a sudden he's like a top seven pick in the draft and scoring 20 in the NBA. I I won't be surprised by anything at this point. Do you think that's fair? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. He is, I would consider a, a pretty good lock to go top 20 pretty high likelihood. He ends up with lottery pick and the common refrain across social media and on, on television among analysts last night was that he's the first, first U S college player taken in the draft. Cause it looks like you're going to have some more 
international guys go one and two or the first couple of picks in the draft. But he is, uh, I think, really in contention to be the first college guy drafted, and that would put him in the top five. I don't think that's outlandish given his size and his shot making skill. He's not an elite athlete, but he's a good enough athlete. You couple that with what he's shown off the catch, off the bounce, on the move. Like he he can fill it up with anybody. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a guy that like I just feel like you could drop on the Toronto Raptors tomorrow and he's 18 a game immediately. I don't yeah. know. I'm I'm not a good scout. I'm not great on how these guys project to the NBA, but it, he's just so gifted. Um I <laughs> I come away impressed with Auburn and the Auburn fans that watch the channel or, or still watch the channel are probably shocked to hear me say that. I think I've joked with you like this, this team feels like bullies that can only beat up on teams that aren't their size. Um, I, I'm shocked. I, I thought they would go away lightly in this game. The fact that they stormed out to a lead in the second half was wildly impressive to me. Do you feel mm-hmm. the same as I do that like oddly Auburn was impressive in this loss? Auburn is, I think, the ultimate conundrum this season because your eye test tells you they're they are a pretty good team, a very good team. And that second half run you mentioned certainly solidifies that. However, they're one in seven in quad one games right now because Ole Miss lost Alabama, dropped Ole Miss out. So now Auburn only has one quad one win this season. They're one in seven. They're 0 and six away from home against tournament teams. This Auburn team is. Like yeah. The eye tests and what they've actually accomplished don't match, don't match up. I mean, mentioned in preview, this was the last chance for them to really make a statement. They play Mississippi State this weekend, but then it's it's Georgia and I want to say another uh, bottom SEC team, maybe Missouri. I don't have their schedule up, up in front of me, but that's this was their chance to like really make a, a big statement about legitimizing how good they are and validating those lofty analytical rankings and once again, just couldn't close it out. Couldn't close it out. They didn't have a guard really step up late to make the plays. Janai Broom was pretty good in this game. Like he he did what you would expect Janai Broom to do, what we've come to expect him to do. But late in, late in games, they get in these situations and they don't have anybody that has stepped up or made themselves the go-to guy or has shown the willingness to say, I got this, come follow me to the end. They don't, they, no one has stepped up and done that. I think this team is good enough to win multiple NCAA tournament games, to make the Final Four. The eye test tells me they're, they are good enough to do that. Everything that we have seen, though, from a results standpoint, indicates they're more likely to be upset early than for that end. And so, like, I, they're, they're a huge conundrum because I don't, I don't know what's more likely. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to square. It really is. Um Look, they they had ten steals in this game. Like that's ten live ball turnovers against Tennessee. Like it, it, it's impressive. I think uh, we did talk about like how would their pressure work against Connect. And uh, to Connect's credit, he only had one of those turnovers. He was very very good against the pressure. But you still got to Zakai Ziegler, who's normally a guy who takes care of the basketball. Like I I think the way Auburn wants to win games works i'm not here to say it doesn't it just it 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 seems like they do still get into traps against the best teams they play and obviously you're not going to make a run to a final four without playing some of those best teams uh it was good to see jalen williams back off the bench 21 minutes 12 points here they need him fully healthy if this game was any indication i think he is either fully healthy or very close to fully healthy yeah i I would agree he is getting him back to 100 percent and playing the level he was at pre-injury is going to be the biggest key for Auburn making a long run. Yeah. Um, Tennessee's formula here. I mean, not to oversimplify it, but they've had elite defenses. It seems like Barnes was just like, Hey, we're going to get an elite offensive guy. And even if he didn't expect it, he probably stumbled into it. And two weeks into practice realized, Oh, connects unstoppable. So now we have four guys who are going to defend their butts off and a fifth who's out there. And then we have one guy who's going to score his butt off and four guys who are out there. Can that win a national championship? I don't know, to be perfectly honest with you. History says no. And I'm glad you brought this up. This is actually something that I'm writing in the Ralph report that will be up on Heat Check CBB uh, in the morning, on a Friday morning. They rely on him so much offensively, particularly in these close games against good teams. And it's hard to blame them because he comes through time and time again. Like you just saw it against one of the nation's best defenses. Like he scored 39 
couldn't be stopped. We've seen them do it against other good teams too. Sometimes Tennessee loses, sometimes Tennessee wins, but this is like their get out of jail free card, right? It is rare to see a team go as far as Tennessee wants to go in the NSA tournament with one guy essentially leading everybody else. The fan, you know, Kemba did with UConn in 2011. Shabazz did with UConn in 2014. Steph willed Davidson to the Elite Eight uh, back in 20, 2008. 2008. Um, basically on, on his own back. Like we've seen guys do this. Carson Edwards almost did the same thing with, with Purdue, the Carson Edwards year. Um, we've seen guys do it. But part of the reason why it captivates us as basketball fans so much when it happens is that it's rare. I think Connect is good enough for that to happen. I'm also concerned that Tennessee relies on him too much and has gotten to the default. There was one possession late in this game. There was about two minutes and 45 seconds left. Tennessee had called timeout. They were up a, a possession. Uh, it, was either, it was either three or four points. And Tennessee had called him out. They had a sideline out of bounds. It mounted the ball to Zakai Ziegler. And it was clear they were looking to get the ball to connect. Because obviously, why not, right? He's on the wing. Auburn denies him getting the ball. Like, just swarms it. They're like, you're not getting the ball to connect. So Zakai Ziegler, instead of trying to, like, be aggressive, make something happen, and the other three guys trying to be available, Ziegler just, like, dribbles in a circle. Like, dribbles down through the paint, back out on the wing, back out on top, wastes 20 seconds in the shot clock, still trying to get the ball to connect, then realizes there's five seconds left and drives and gets bailed out with a foul call. But the entire possession in a key possession in this game was Ziegler looking for connect, now looking for his own offense, and three other guys standing around. Mm -hmm. I don't know if like that gets you over the hump when you are that reliant and that dependent on one guy. Like, yeah feed connect the ball when he's open if he's not open you're playing four on four and you're good enough <laughs> to get some buckets but they didn't make the defense sweat at all if Ziva doesn't get bailed out there I think there's a good chance Auburn goes back down and scores and then it's a, a one-point game and we're having a very different conversation potentially but he got bailed out and they were able to kind of keep the distance from there but that possession to me raised alarm bells like oh this is um it's either him or you're just like not going to shoot the ball which was alarming. Yes. Yeah. It's, it really is interesting to watch because as gifted as connect is, it's, it has felt like it's become this thing where guys on Tennessee who used to be more involved or bigger threats like Vescovy and Ziegler at, at minimum are mm -hmm. is so comfortable deferring to him. And there's a level right. of unselfishness to it that I almost respect as a watcher. It's like those guys are smart basketball players who realize how gifted their teammate is and they realize what sets them up for success. But I do – I find it interesting because like in the tournament for the first 36 minutes, things don't get bogged down like that. Like I, I it's going to be right. easier to get connect the ball – in the flow of the game, they don't have these issues. But if you're in a one-possession game late with two minutes left, teams can just go full deny and say, we're not going to let Dalton touch the ball. And if that happens, I, I do trust the personnel. But at least in this game, Tennessee didn't know what they were doing. And you you called the one possession out where Ziegler got hit or uh, got bailed out. There was the other mm -hmm. possession late where this one really put it out of reach. I think it was a six-point lead with about a minute and a half left. And it ends up, Dalton's hands, top of the key, six or five seconds on the shot clock. He kind of hezzies and then shoots an NBA range pull-up three, super contested, goes off the side of the backboard. Vescovy catches Baker Mazzara, I think, sleeping and just puts it up and in. But, like, that's a lucky bounce. That, that essentially should yeah. have been a turnover, right? And it's, again, another possession where Tennessee's players are not willing to attack. They're just going to get the ball to Dalton and watch. And mm -hmm. I think in the flow of the normal game, that's fine. In the final four minutes against a good team, it's probably not fine. And as good as Connect is, there's also some things he's not. He, if he has the ball, he's not going to give it up. Like he, He's not right. looking to create for someone else. He's going to somehow shoot the ball. 
And uh, that would scare me against an elite defensive team, which I think Auburn is. But project further, like say they play Houston, say they play some of these top five teams in the country. Like I, I think it is a problem that could hold Tennessee back. We're splitting hairs here. I think it's important to remember that because we're talking about Tennessee being a Final Four team, being a national championship type team. They're good enough to make the Sweet 16, I think, no matter what, which is the the furthest Rick Barnes has taken this team. If they're going to go further, though, you need to see guys be more aggressive. There is always going to be some element of iso ball late in games. That's just what basketball has become, particularly when you have a guy who was so much more skilled than everybody else like Tennessee had to connect. That's a luxury. You're going to see that. You can argue whether they should do that or not, but that's a luxury they have that they are going to use. Ziegler played well in this game. He had 17 points and nine assists, but he wasn't even looking to make a play when the connect play wasn't there. Yeah, He had a great game and just like didn't look to make a play. And in, in these, in these one game sample sizes, you're going to be caught in a close game at least once, unless you're UConn last year, but you're going to be caught in a close game at least once. And you know, opposing defenses are going to say, Somebody other than Connect beat us. We'll throw our best defender on. We'll throw two guys at him. You're going to have to make somebody else beat us late in these games. Tennessee has the ability to do that. Ziegler is awesome. Pascovi is awesome. We, we've seen Gainey play a big role late in games. But they've gone from being complementary pieces in those situations to bystanders. And they can't be bystanders. Yeah. Yep going to be an incredible balance. Like, uh, again, I think this team can win a national championship. I, I'm I'm mostly buying into how special Connect is. And mm-hmm. I think the mix of elite defense with an elite offensive weapon, like, why can't it work? They might need some breaks in the draw, but teams get breaks yeah. all the time. And if they do, th- this is one of the best teams in the country. I just, like, w- I feel like oftentimes I'm watching different versions of Vescovy and, and Ziegler than we've watched in the past. And um, like I said, I, I more so find it a, a praise of who those guys are as players, that they're smart and are respecting the greatness that is Dalton Connect offensively. But it makes for a very interesting dichotomy, especially when we get to single elimination play. Um, I'll force your hand to end with this. I think we come away impressed with both these teams. It felt like for the first time, a game involving Auburn to me, it felt like we were watching two of the best teams in the country. And that's no disrespect, but like, mm-hmm. I didn't come away from Auburn versus Alabama either time and be like, wow, that's two great teams. I felt like this is some sloppy basketball and whatever. Uh, In this game, I'm like, wow, this was just a great performance from both teams. Call your shot. Where does their season end in March? Auburn or Tennessee? Both. I think Auburn's ends in the round of 32. Tennessee's will depend some on the draw. I think it ends in the Elite Eight, but I do think there is a chance that it ends in the Final Four title game, depending on how how the draw goes. I don't know if they'll win the whole thing, um, but they will at least go further than any Rick Barnes team has gone before at Tennessee. I love when I'm aligned with you. I just do, um, and I am. I that I, I think Auburn is still a first weekend team. And I, this is the first game that gives me big pause to that before I've been like running to line up and say, I don't believe in this team. Now I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you got my attention. Still think you're, you're vulnerable, but you got my attention. And uh, yeah, Tennessee to me, just off my list, like right now, before the draw comes out, it's like, you just pick your four favorite teams. The reality is the draw comes out and sometimes three of your four are in the same region and you can't do this i hate that i i hate it too and I, Tennessee, we need to talk to the committee about about that that's yeah let it. let us make the draw okay <laughs> uh yeah t- tennessee right now is they got to be like fifth or sixth at highest for me mm. and there's a very real chance if they're if they're in the right region that i could see this team going to the final four that's brian ralph he checks cbb read the ralph report he says coming out friday he does this every single week uh the best in the business he truly is he's going to be helping us with a bunch of previews and recaps throughout the ncaa tournament and the conference tournaments coming up thank you brian for being here subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of it